Okay. All right. Welcome, Brian. Thanks for uh, joining me here. Now, my apologies to those that were trying to join us on a couple of live streams. We have a technical issue. We're not sure what it is. Uh, we're going to get that sorted out. But at the moment, when I bring in a, a guest host like this, it's it's not. I can't get it to go to live to YouTube. So, um, I just posted a, a video. Some of you will see. Members will see it, of course, and some subs is. Uh, just spinning through the majors and uh, a couple of alts the, the 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 general picture here technically is a, a little bit of hurry up and wait the market they got mixed signals uh in in a couple of different spots so there's not a a a, a collective sense of oh, opportunity based on the technicals in fact it, bitcoin's bearish eth is bullish uh, i looked at a couple of meme coins uh just for a little comparison doge is uh bearish and uh, sheep is bullish right? so it's just everywhere you look it's a little bit of like hmm boy the technicals are not giving us clear direction so i thought what a perfect time to bring in brian from sentiment to look at some of the on-chain metrics the the sentiment amongst them uh, across the market and perhaps we can look at some of the tells that were there uh, pr prior to this last little sell-off although i think we all can agree it was very fed driven but perhaps there were tells in the sent in the sentiment and sentiment data because it's more than just social sentiment uh and so i thought brian would be the perfect guy to bring on now so with that i'm gonna be quiet here and turn this over to brian and let him uh, take it from here as he's he's got great expertise here i'm still learning it as i go through it so perfect for him to come on okay with that i'll be quiet now and turn it over to you brian sure so thank you for the warm introduction we've certainly seen a lot of volatility and a lot of depressing kind of sentiment coming over the past week up until this morning uh, here in the US where we saw some soft jobs reporting coming in, indicating there's a lot of stagnancy in the uh, market that is, or the jobs uh, industry in particular, which is suggesting that there should be another um, interest rate cut, uh, the first interest rate move since last July actually. Um, so this comes right after the past FOMC decision on Wednesday where they didn't change a thing. And now there's already speculation that their hand is almost forced to cut interest rates in June when this next decision comes about. So both the stock market <laughs> as well as crypto has seen a nice bounce today. Not a massive one, but enough where it's re really raised some eyebrows. And specifically, we've seen a few assets from the AI and big data sector kind of stand out. Uh, if we look at just the past 24 hours here, uh, Toncoin is continuing on its trek upwards. Near protocol up 8%. Hedera, 8.6%. Meme coin that has just had an amazing 2024 thus far. Whiff is up 6.7%. Arweave up 8%. And way over here, Ordi is also up 14% as it continues to climb the market cap ranks. So huge gains today. Uh, overall, the market cap of crypto is still down about 3% over the past week. But if we looked about uh, 24 hours ago, it was more like down 8 9%. So this is a nice rebound on the weekly time frame. Meanwhile, trading volume has picked up, uh, up about 11.5% compared to the previous week. On the social end, sentiment-wise, we can see that there is less discussion for the vast majority of assets over the past week compared to the week prior. We can even look at this on a monthly scale, and you can see just how decreased the overall interest level in crypto has been uh, compared to the all-time high month of March. So what does this all mean? Well, la less interest means that there's a lot more capitulation and bearish sentiment uh, revolving around crypto right now. And that's generally a good sign indicating a rebound is more likely. Uh, now, even before this jump that happened today, we've been on many of our videos and insights telling people that the, the metrics are suggesting that we would at least see some sort of relief rally. And we may be in the midst of it, or it could be something longer. That's the part where we're going to have to figure out um, as this day and the weekend progresses and we see how whales react to this bounce. Um, we can look at a few things here. So one thing that I've been keeping an eye on is um, 
this chart, which is indicating that Bitcoin's total amount of non-empty wallets continues its climb. Uh, this is over the past six months. So this past month here, you saw a massive amount of growth in Bitcoin. Uh, and then it really started to taper off the final week of April. Meanwhile, the one that's really getting the most gains, if we go down to this list, Toncoin over the past six months has increased its uh, its overall amount of non-empty wallets by over double, up 110%. Dogecoin next in line at plus 27%. Keep in mind, these are just top caps uh, with apologies to Binance and Solana, which we don't have the data on for this particular metric. Uh, but Tether is actually up significantly. This indicates there's been a lot of liquidations and people moving their profits into stable coins for now. Uh, USD coin right behind it up 16%, Ethereum up 11%. Uh, there's Bitcoin up 10% in the past six months. And then XRP, Chainlink and Cardano uh, up seven, six and break even over the past six months, they're actually struggling quite a bit. Uh, some of the longer term top cap altcoins that many are familiar with have become more stagnant uh, as you know newer pastures like Tuncoin have turned a lot of heads. So I, I think it's interesting. There, there definitely are signs of capitulation just from this chart. And we can further look at our social dashboard right here. And we can see that the trending coins right now uh, are indicating that a lot of discussion is pointing toward Tether at this time. Uh, there seems to be a lot of discussion around the reported $5 billion profit that Tether has earned over the past year. Uh, that report came out and raised quite a few eyebrows. And then there's just a lot of discussion here on the bearish summary that's generated by our AI tools. And it tells us that uh, there are a lot more questions about the validity uh, and the liquidity of Tether, despite their reported profit. This happens almost every time we see a downturn in crypto. It's like clockwork, where we see you know, a, a month-long stretch where crypto doesn't show gains and actually drops in value. And suddenly, everyone's like, well, is, is Tether viable? Uh, should we trust it? And then USD coin sometimes gets pulled into that conversation as well. So it's not surprising to see that Tether's at the number one spot. That's definitely an indication of bearishness. Uh, TRB, FXS, Rev. And then you've got Ethereum here at number five, interestingly. I still think there's a lot of discussion about the ETFs and the will they or won't they discussion about the SEC approving the first spot Ethereum ETF later this month. XRP here at number seven. Uh, Pepe has actually snuck into the top 10, interestingly. It's had a pretty good run uh, compared to most assets in 2024. So overall, uh, the trending coins are showing a bit of bearishness. I, I especially put um, a lot into the fact that Tether is the number one talked about asset right now. We can also explore the longer term narratives to see what's getting an increasing or decreasing amount of discussion. SEC and consensus, that's actually kind of dropped off in discussion rate lately. This big blue portion here, that's the price of Bitcoin. So there's always a lot of discussion related to it. You especially saw it uh, at this point of capitulation when Bitcoin was really free falling here uh, during the final stretch of April. Other expanding topics, I see art is getting a little bit of a gain, interestingly. Uh, CZ sentencing, I know that news just came out in the past few days. GameFi is a hot topic. AI, Bitcoin in general, is, is getting a lot of discussion. Inflation is getting an increasing amount of discussion as well, which probably is due today to the uh, jobs report coming out and the Fed potentially increasing its interest rates, or, or I'm sorry, cutting interest rates um, on the next FOMC report. So optimism is rising that that will be the case. So I'll take a little breather here. I just touched on, I don't know, roughly 10 minutes or so on the markets, but what, what are you seeing on your side 
Uh, and, and what kinds of questions do you think sentiment may help be able to help answer and expand upon? You talking to me about what I'm seeing technically? Yeah, just what's you know what the you overall yeah. all perception from your community on the markets right now? Well, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. There's there's a, a more fear than I've seen recently amongst the members that somewhat surprises me. Um, because if you if we step back a little bit and look at the dailies and longer term charts, it's still very much a bull market in the in in the majors, right? So if we if we just use Bitcoin, it, ETH, right now, th that's if we're looking at a weekly chart, it would it would hard to be dramatically bearish. Uh, but as we try and zoom in to daily and then to a four hour and the one hour, you, it's, it's not a bullish setup that we're seeing. So in, in the TA video that I just recorded before you and I got on, um, my consensus was that there's there's no there's no clear move that's required. Right, it's not a time to be overly bullish, not a time to be overly bearish. The market has to reveal a bit more about its intentions here as we get through this week of volatility events. I mean, this was a big week we had, right? So when we've seen the market respond, I mean, straight down, then straight up. Now we're getting some follow through today. Uh, certainly good to see Bitcoin back over 60, but my view is that it still needs one more flush lower uh, to get everybody really depressed and then then it's free to fly. But th right, right now it looks like it's it's too fast a recovery and technically as, as we would look at it, it's it's too much too fast and that 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 kind of a v bottom oh let's see if i can even oh let me let, let me see here if i can oh shit let's see if i do i gotta do if i'm gonna share my screen hang on a second let me see if i can get it over here this is so we'll do it this way now i think that's gonna come over yeah it is okay so let me let me come over here so it is and i just went through this with with my with my my uh look at this technically this looks like one two three here comes the four Right. The, the oh, it's going to be an easy. Oh, here we go. And then one more down to sweep these lows, hit the 38. And then then perhaps we can we're going to have to come back and break this and then, you know, get get something going that would suggest mm. that we've now got a low here. So the, it's it's too sharp. It's too fast. And it doesn't fit the, 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 the this pattern here doesn't quite have a good completion because this would be completing in a three and we'd be looking for a completion in a five. So then the, the five would be a series of threes that would bring us down here for the fifth at here of the C of the fourth. So then if you pull that back to something larger, okay, the implication is that while this this leg here is still, you know, it's, it's it, there's a bit of a wag as to how you're going to count that. So rather than try and guess at it, I, I, I think what we can all agree is that we've got just looking at this channeling, if we kind of just keep it as, as simple as we might we we might look for it. That seems to be what we're looking to come out of here, which is just a textbook. Like can't 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 per, draw that any cleaner, right? I mean, talk about the right look. That is absolutely perfect, right? And then you look at the channeling coming down to the 38 on the channel. The the imbalances here, the fair value gap, the 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 sentiment being going negative as we go into the lows, which is often right. That's a trigger as people start thinking, oh, we're going through the floor, right? I mean, it's, we're we're so schizophrenic with with sentiment like it's down oh bitcoin's crashing crypto's over it's up and oh you know we're going to a million it's it's it, the market is so hypersensitive but right. what's moving the market right it's the fed is all you know still the dominant force in the market so all of a sudden a little fed relief a little a little bit of the scare of fed gets taken out right which was driving this down then all of a sudden it's like oh sure we're out of the woods right so well maybe it's a rate cut maybe it's maybe it's two uh, the the rate hike seems to be for the time being off the table with the good data. Again, this, this week was a big week of volatility events that we had to get through. And so here, here's the reaction. Now, could could we go, of course, the market's under no obligation to do anything ever. It's gonna do what it's gonna do. We're just trying to be be logical about what, what to anticipate here. So I wouldn't even consider, oh, let's get up, until we break one of these, uh, come here, one of these, Try again, one of these pivots, this or this, right? Until we break that, it's still lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low. There's there's no reason technically to be assuming, right? It's dangerous. But plus, to be assuming this, 
strikes me as too much, right? Seem, seems like if anything, th this would have to be, this would, there would have to be a correction of this, right? Again, it's not that the market has to do it. It's what it typically does. Then we could go. Well, then we're going to be back here looking at this going, how are we going to finish there? Again, if you put your Elliott hat on, right, you're looking to finish in a five. Well, mm -hmm. this is a series of, of, of threes that would create the diag for the five. So I love it down here in the mid fifties. We've got this high volume node. Here's the 38. Now, if we get lower again, as I just went through this, if, if we get into some of this imbalance where the market will look to rebalance that, then, then perhaps we're going to the 50. Well, then this count gets invalidated because we'd have the fifth would be longer than the third and we'd, we'd have some distortion in the in the in the in that diag that you wouldn't want to see well then we're gonna have to reevaluate the whole thing but right now it's too it's too soon to be uber bearish and too soon to be crazy bullish other than the longer trend suggests right no, no reason to make any change to your you know whatever your one year two year three year horizon is but i thought your your read on the on not just the on-chain metrics as well as the sentiment seems to be reflecting pretty much what we're seeing here technically like oh oh we're out of the woods right so right. Was, as soon as everybody thinks we're out of the woods right expect another leg down that's what i would suspect we can exactly do something, something yeah. like that and it makes sense i think that the the positive news coming out today there might be a bit of an overreaction to it uh that seems to be the case in equities markets as well there's just uh, it, the the fomc decision just happened two days ago and we're yeah. already suddenly convinced that the FOMC will cut rates four weeks from now or however long it's going to be. I know it's around that time. Um, and, and it seems a little premature. I mean, so much can happen in just the next four weeks. And the FOMC has a multitude of different factors that they weigh in when they make the decisions for interest rate hikes or cuts. And the last time they even moved anything was 10 months ago. So I, I don't know if I'm fully convinced that there's going to suddenly be, you know, a change of heart that coincides with when the crowd expects there to be a change of heart. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. So that's why I thought it was good timing. I'm sorry we couldn't do it on Wednesday, but I thought it good good timing that uh, we take a look at some of these metrics beyond the, with kind of the mixed bag that we're seeing technically and let let some of this perhaps guide us. And then always, you know, this, this is such an interesting product, I think, to technicians to see how your data can be looked at objectively and logically and then to, to augment what we're looking at with regards to price action. Definitely. And I'll show one final thing here. Uh, and then I'll, I'll hop off. But uh, I think it's really important to check out what average trading returns are looking like, because we look all the time at TA charts and things like that, which I think you provide a great value uh, when you when you go over these um, different tools that you're showing on your screen. And oftentimes the question is, when you're looking at TA, what exactly is the low and the high and what time frame should we be looking at based on what kind of strategy we have? Well, to supplement the great TA analysis that you do, we've got 30-day MVRV here and 365 days. So this is essentially like a shorter-term swing trade type of metric to show what the low versus high is and a long-term to show what the low versus high is. Uh, and I think this is a tremendous measurement that can help identify, in addition to those support and resistance levels, what exactly... Uh, your expectation should be based on the crowd's results. And if we looked at this just a couple days ago on May 1st, the average returns for any address that had been active over the past 30 days was minus 12%, pretty significant. Mm. Uh, and when it gets down really low, like right around here, 15 or lower, and then 15 or higher, that's negative 15 versus positive 15%. Mm -hmm. These are the respective opportunity zones or danger zones for that orange line. You can see mm -hmm. it started getting into that danger zone here in late February, just a couple of weeks before the all-time high was still established. It's hard to see here in orange, but there was another big cross right here. And then this was the lowest it had been on May 1st, of the past six months, we really haven't seen a lot of negative returns because markets have been so prominently positive since mid-October. Mm -hmm. So 
with that said, this was a great signal that you could be coming in at a, coming into Bitcoin at a very low risk. And if you're coming into Bitcoin, that essentially means any asset. Um, and obviously, in hindsight, this was a perfect buy the dip time right here. Uh, and we're still in negative range for the 30 day average trading returns until we start to cross into positive territory. You know, like we saw here, once it happened on April 8th, that's where the price top formed. Mm -hmm. I would say we're still in the clear for a little bit of a run uh, and basically having the math dictate that we're still at a decreased risk and buying when others are in pain. Now, on the longer term side of things, 365 day traders, they're still up an average of 25 percent. Mm. That makes sense because Bitcoin has uh, so all close to doubled over the past year, depending mm -hmm. on the exact month you're looking at. But substantially, I mean, it's been a good year for crypto on a 365 day scale. Mm -hmm. So we saw way up here, uh, average trading returns on the 365 day time frame was plus 72 percent. That's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's at least gotten below this line here, indicating it's not as risky. But until the long term starts to get close to zero percent or go under zero, keep in mind there's still a long term risk because this is a zero sum metric. It spends an even amount of time in its history above zero or below zero, just like the 30 day every mm -hmm. time frame spends an equal amount of time above or below because it's market value uh, times realized value. And right now, there's a little long-term risk where there is actually a, a, a shorter-term opportunity. Um, so it depends, on catch what, up, yeah. you know, it depends on the time frame you're looking at, really. But it's kind of a mixed bag right now, which is why it's so confusing. I well, would, that's exactly what I concluded. That it was a, that it was just a, a mixed messages coming left and right. So, you know, as they say, no trade is a trading decision. Yeah, and I know that people want to at least have some way that we might be leaning on the shorter term scale. And my my opinion, based on this chart that I just opened up for whales, is that we're still in a pretty good spot for potentially a shorter term rebound. I don't know if we're going to start to revisit the 70Ks anytime soon. That's up to the whales over the next couple of weeks. But this line here, this measures the amount of BTC held by wallets with 10 to 10K BTC in them. They hold roughly two thirds of the entire supply of Bitcoin. And these are essentially all of those main sharks and whales. Yes, there are a few exchange addresses mixed in here. But for the most part, this is like the key smart money tier that actually can move mountains when they want to. Mm -hmm. And since January 28th, they have accumulated about 182,000 BTC net wise collectively out of all of those wallets. That's mm. hundreds of billions of dollars. If I have that calculation, correct. I think Michael Saylor has most of it. Yeah, I, I think he does too, <laughs> based on uh, how vocal he is about it. But, uh, since April 3rd, there has been a slight profit take going on. They've dropped about 40,000 BTC, which is a lot, but I still like the long-term trend. That's what this line is showing. The overall long-term trend of BTC being accumulated is going up at a pretty healthy pace over the last couple of months. And the price is going down during that time. So I consider that kind of a bullish divergence uh, that we can be optimistic about. So oftentimes the crowd will initialize a move and they've decided today they're going to push up prices. Now we see at the close of today and through the weekend, how are the whales going to react to this, this slight bounce that we've seen? Are they going to help assist in its momentum or are they going to quash it really quickly and take more profit? That's what I'll be looking for. Yeah, I think it's not a time to be taking aggressive action either way. Let's get a little more reveal from the market. Exactly. exactly. So good. But perfect, right? I love it when when we're in sync on what we're seeing with with your data as well as just the general TA. Um, so great. I, I, well, I appreciate you stepping in. Sorry for the technical issues. I'm going to get that sorted out. But uh, thanks for doing this. Um, for any that are interested in sentiment, we have a link. And, uh, you know, if you want to support the channel, blah, 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 right? 
not trying pimping it, but right, it's, it's a great product. You can get there for our link. If you want to support the channel, you can get there on your own either way, right? Nope, you know, just your, your call. But I think um, you it, the trial is one week? Yep, one free week. You basically yep. can just head to the pricing page, make a free account, um, and you'll, you'll have essentially, uh, even if you don't get a, a pro membership, you'll have a 30 day lag on Sandbase. You can check out a lot of our charts and get a feel for them and then decide if you want to be a, a monthly subscriber. And when you have the code trade devils entered, mm. when you make your first purchase, whether it's for one month or six month, six months or one year, whatever it is, you get 25% off of whatever that purchase is. It's a pretty sweet yeah. value and a lot of yeah. people have already taken advantage of it. Yeah, we appreciate you doing that, All right? So that that's another another reason to use our link if you're if you're so inclined. All right, sounds good. Okay, well with that we will wrap it up here so this doesn't run too long. Thanks again, Brian, and hopefully next next time we get together we can do this live and uh, we'll, we'll sort out these technical issues. All right. Absolutely, so my with that I, I thank you again for, for uh, hanging out and sharing what your knowledge and expertise with us and showing us what Sandbase can do. And with that, I wish you a good weekend. Great stuff. Same to you. Cheers to everybody. And talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks.